deliberate uh, with respect to emotions, uh, where our primary focus would be on the impact of uh, emotion and emotional appraisal on the health of an individual. When we talk of health, we are referring to both the physiological health, okay, the physical health and the mental health both. But before we do that, uh, we just have uh, uh, a definition of health by the World Health Organization, the WHO, which says that uh, no health is basically a complete physical, mental and social well-being. Now, the interesting part of the definition of health is that you do not consider health to be exclusively physical or mental in nature, but the social well-being has also been attached to the definition. Okay. And this you know broadens the horizon of health like anything, because you also have the uh, social well-being of an individual that comes there. It has been found that uh, besides playing an important role in the adjustment process, something that we were discussing uh, since last four days, okay, emotions also affect our health in a massive way. Okay. And if you look at uh, the ancient culture, especially I am referring here to India, China and the Greek culture, which are considered to be pretty old, okay. they have all explained health in terms of certain balance that you strike with the nature. Okay. So, uh, even little later we will be referring to the Ayurvedic concept, just we will just uh, know in a very cursory way we will just touch upon that, okay. where the whole emphasis is upon uh, the balance that uh, one is able to maintain uh, with respect to the nature. Okay. And in case you realize uh, that this balance or harmony, okay, uh, which basically demands you to strike a balance that demands you to you know uh, maintain an equilibrium uh, with respect to your physiology, your psychology and your social well-being. If any one of them you start uh, you know uh, having an imbalance that starts affecting the others also. So, little imbalance at the physical state and you realize that psychological social well being also gets affected. Okay. A little imbalance at the psychological well being and then you realize that the physical and the social well being starts getting affected. And social well being of course, no, it has a heavy influence of the remaining two and vice versa, it also influences uh, both of them uh, too much. A common example could be that uh, all of you must have experienced. Uh, say if you have an acute pain in your body, say for example, uh, uh, either you have an acute pain in your uh, stomach or the, you have the whole body ache okay, and that is acute in nature, okay. you cannot psychologically concentrate on any other activity, simply because your, pray, your pain is acute enough to drag your full attention. Okay. And this in turn will not allow you to get engaged in any type of social activity, which was actually needed by your uh, society at that point of time. Okay. Similarly, if you are uh, psychologically disturbed, if, uh, you had a, a terrible uh, paper in your mid semester exam, uh, you anticipate that uh, the grades are going to be very low, you are internally very disturbed okay. and that evening you do not feel having your meal. Okay. So, just uh, disturbance at the psychological level starts influencing your uh, physiological mechanism and similarly, if somebody asks you that okay, uh, no, today was the last paper and we are planning to uh, uh, go for a movie, so why do not you join us okay. and your social well being gets affected, you say that no more movies, no it is enough. Now, I am myself uh, no, seeing movie in my own life, my grades are no fluctuating here and there. Uh, there could be uh, some other uh, social phenomena which really perturbs you. Okay. You get perturbed to the extent uh, that uh, you uh, know your uh, psychological uh, uh, attachment towards that very episode is to becomes too intense, your body also reacts in a particular way. 
uh, say for example, uh, the recent you know, December gang rape episode in Delhi for example, you know, all those uh, who despite the uh, you know, fact that it was uh, cold winter morning, despite the fact that uh, there was the presence of a heavy police force, despite the fact that uh, you know, repeated lati charges and water cannons were being used, still many, many people decided to go there. Okay. They must have been somewhere perturbed by the whole way the thing had taken place and therefore, psychologically okay, you are determined only and only to focus exclusively on that very episode. So, you leave your office, you leave your other engagements, okay. it is painful to continuously stand no, for so long. Okay. It is painful if in the chilled winter morning when you are having all those uh, jackets and somebody pours water on you. It is difficult managing all those things, but then you are psychologically so moved by the social cause, okay, the whole uh, disturbance that has taken place in your involvement okay, that you do not bother about these things. You neither feel uh, having tea, you do not feel tired, you do not feel having meals. Okay. So, this is how you know the social well being also you know, influences the remaining two attributes. You know. In life, Finally, uh, what the ancient cultures uh, were initially pro, uh, know, promulgating, what they were advocating, even the recent trend of research also endorses the same. Okay, that uh, if you have to have a very healthy life, okay, if you want that the physiological state should be very, very uh, sound, then you also have to strike a balance uh, know, among the components that are available in your nature. Because emotions are by default going to influence us psychologically, okay. therefore, it is certain uh, that it will also influence our social well being, it will also influence our physiological state of the body. Uh, I am not going to the Chinese and the Greek uh, interpretations, but if you look at our own uh, Indian interpretation of the illnesses, the diseases, okay. illnesses it has been explained in terms of the disequilibrium. Okay. Right now, we were talking that the some of the ancient cultures including our own okay, talks about maintaining equilibrium uh, among the components that are available in your nature. Okay. Our traditional Ayurvedic concept also talks about uh, this and it explains illness in terms of the disequilibrium. Okay. According to Ayurveda, one has to maintain a balance that is equilibrium okay, among the three energies in our physical constitution the vat, pit, the cuff. No. And for Ayurveda, it is all about vat, pit and cuff. Okay. And all the elements, what uh, in Ayurveda they are called, called as doshas, the dosh. Okay. So, all these doshas are explained in terms of imbalance among these three energies. No. So, if you have uh, you know, more of uh, vat, okay, that is uh, you know, the more of gas element in the body, then it would start influencing your body in certain way. Okay. You develop certain ailments. Okay. Similarly, if you have a pitta, if you have a higher release of pitta in the body, that is the bile pigments. No? If you have more extra release of bile pigments in the body, it will also adversely affect you. And similarly, if you have the cough, uh, no, then it also influences you. And the whole of the concept of uh, bodily diseases according to Ayurveda is actually an imbalance uh, that takes place between these three uh, energies within the body. Okay. We are uh, not going into the details of uh, the Ayurvedic concept, we are just trying to understand that, uh, know, uh, that emotions they do influence our uh, well being, our physical health, our psychological health and therefore, you know, we are referring to some of these concepts. There are uh, two interesting models that basically uh, explains illnesses. Okay. One is the generality model and the other is the specificity model. Okay. Now, the generality model of illness, it uh, you know, describes illness in terms of the disturbance of the internal equilibrium. Okay. So, basically you have uh, your internal mechanism, okay, which is in a harmony uh, with each other. Okay. And once there is uh, no a disharmony, if there is a disequilibrium uh, between any two components uh, no, within the body, then the body becomes susceptible to illness. 
So, susceptibility to such disturbances increase as a result of stress or emotional reaction. So, once you have a stressful experience okay, uh, or once you have uh, you know, some type of uh, what we were referring to here as goal incongruent emotions, they are largely going to affect your body okay, and it might uh, you know, make your body susceptible to one or the other type of illness. Stress, uh, no, just uh, today we would complete this module. Tomorrow, when we begin uh, next module, there we will first begin with stress. So, just in continuation, we will have uh, no exclusive discussion on stress, and there you would again see you know, um, multiple ways in which a, a stressful state adversely affects both our uh, physiological system as well as our psychological functions. So, this is the generality model you have any stressor in your environment, this stressor in turns leads to uh, disequilibrium in the physiological mechanism. Okay. Once the physiological mechanism undergoes certain disturbance, one has increased susceptibility to certain types of illnesses. Okay. The increased uh, susceptibility towards illness, okay, it leads to you know, constitutional predispositions, wherein <coughs> your physi uh, physiological system okay, that uh, no becomes predisposed with uh, one <coughs> or the other type of <coughs> problem. And this uh, no constitutional predisposition finally leads to a specific type of an illness. Okay. Let us take uh, one example. Okay. Uh, one is under tremendous stress because of certain reasons. Okay. Reason we are not uh, elaborating right now, it is just the fact that one is under tremendous stress. Now, this would start you know disturbing the physiological functions of the body. This would mean that the person uh, you know might have an increased blood pressure, okay. the person might have uh, you no know, rapid uh, you know, palpitation, the person might have uh, you know, increased heart rate and therefore, the pulse rate would also increase and then you sustain all these increase in the physiological mechanism for a relatively longer period of time. Okay. Now, if you have a relatively longer exposure of this type of a physiological uh, uh, function, which is of, in a, of an increased magnitude, okay, uh, it uh, you know, starts depleting certain other uh, resources in the body. And when some other resources in the body starts depleting, this means that your body will become more and more susceptible to certain type of diseases, because your immunity is being compromised with. Okay. Once your immunity gets compromised with, okay, a time would come when your vulnerability to certain type of disease maximizes and therefore, you develop specific symptoms, which later on doctors will tell you that these symptoms are indicator of this specific disease. Okay. Say for example, you would realize uh, that uh, most of the people who had been under tremendous stress, okay, they report uh, symptoms of uh, peptic ulcer for example. Okay. Uh, likewise, there are you know, whole lot of diseases which has to do with this type of uh, mechanism, where the trigger is at a stressful experience and then finally, your body surrenders to one or the other type of physical illness. Okay. Now, <coughs> when we say that you know stress influences uh, you know, the body and it makes the body susceptible to one type of illness, okay. experiencing of a stress would mean that you are actually experiencing some goal incongruent emotions. Okay. You remember last time when we took the example of uh, a middle aged man Okay, who wanted his mother to talk about an act, which was otherwise an act of uh, immorality. Okay. And the whole sense of guilt was you know, overwhelming uh, inside him. Okay. When he was first, uh, when he came to the clinic, it was not the guilt which had brought him. It was his physical symptom that brought him to some other clinic, from where he was referred to this place, where finally, it was unearthed that it is basically the unsurmountable uh, you know, guilt that is the primary source of the problem for the individual. Okay. 
there are uh, there are there are several 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 such type of uh, uh, no, uh, diseases where you would realize that one set finally leading to uh, uh, full blown physiological symptom. Now, this is the generality model of illness. We now come to the specificity model. Now, a specificity model basically emphasizes on uh, the specific agents that are responsible for one or the other type of illnesses. Okay. It conceptualizes emotion centered causal phenomena of illness and explains the effect of psychosocial factors on health. So, basically what it does is that it considers that emotion is at the center of the whole uh, you know, chain of illness okay. and uh, it also affects our psychosocial factors. Now, this is what uh, the specificity model says. Okay. On the top you have the person environment relationship. So, again uh, if you refer back to what we were uh, know, talking about right now with respect to the advocacy of the ancient uh, culture that primarily there is a balance that is needed among the elements in your nature. Okay. If you are able to maintain that fine you are healthy both physically and mentally, okay. your social well being is also at the best. Okay, the moment you have a difficulty uh, among these factors, then you start experiencing the problem. So, if the specificity model basically says that the most important uh, you know, attribute in terms of uh, understanding illness is your relationship with your environment. Second, depending on how you are relating to your environment, you have the appraisal phenomena. Now, the whole of goal congruent and incongruent emotions Okay, uh, initially professed by Lazarus that we were talking you know for last two days okay. that comes into picture there. So, you have a relationship, you have an appraisal mechanism okay. and this appraisal mechanism can lead to two things. One you have a specific emotions, a specific emotion means you can have one of the goal congruent emotion or you can have one of the goal incongruent emotion. Okay. This appraisal also leads to coping. You remember the secondary appraisal factors, okay, you know, all, both the sets, goal congruent and incongruent emotion were. Okay. When you look at the futuristic possibilities, you, know, you anticipate certain things and you also see whether uh, it is you know, facilitating your coping mechanism or not. Now, coping mechanism, if it you know, really helps you, your appraisal of an emotion helps you cope this in turn will provide a positive feedback to your experience of the given emotion. Okay. Now, your inability to cope or uh, know the whole struggle that you have to know make in order to cope okay, that can lead to some specific type of illnesses. Okay. And similarly, there is certain types of uh, uh, emotions can lead to specific physiological disturbances. Okay. And once you have a specific type of a physiological uh, know unrest within the body, disequilibrium within the body, okay, again it leads to a specific type of an illness. The primary difference between the two models is that one model which basically talks about a stressor, okay, a disturbance that it leads to within the body and then finally, leading to uh, illness. Whereas, here emotion has been given an utmost uh, you know, priority, where it says that your relationship with uh, environment, okay, how you appraise it, what type of uh, final emotion you experience, uh, what type of emotion it is, whether it is goal congruent, one of the goal congruent or one of the goal incongruent emotions. Okay whether you are able to successfully cope with uh, that type of a specific situation or not and that finally, leads to a specific type of an illness. Okay. So, both these models basically talk about uh, the impact of an emotional state on the health of an individual. Now, as emotions are considered to be by product of the relationship between the uh, person and the environment okay. and therefore, somatic illnesses. Somatic illnesses uh, means the 
illnesses which are manifested in terms of bodily symptoms okay as well as psychiatric disorders they can be explained with respect to the varying degree of emotional state okay uh, there is a, an interesting theory we won't go into the details of it okay called uh, alexander's vector theory which basically talks about no uh, the basic biological processes of intake retention and expenditure so how much is the intake how much you retain and finally how much you exhaust okay and uh, this vector theory okay it also argues that emotions okay implicated with vectors can disturb the bodily system okay so basically all i am trying to say is that you take the generality model of illness you take the specificity model of illness you take the vector theory Okay, all these theories, uh, know, which attempts to explain human illness, okay, do bank upon, upon the fact uh, that the state of emotion that one experiences, okay, <coughs> the intensity of it, and the whole appraisal mechanism, okay, leading towards one type of uh, or the other type of emotion, positively or negatively influences the health of an individual. Uh, you must be aware of uh, you know, multiple types of practices uh, that are otherwise organized in the society like uh, uh, I am sure at many places you must have seen this, uh, where people assemble at a common place usually it is a park. Okay. So, they will go for jogging and then they have something like laughter sessions. Okay. So, there is no issue that invokes laughter in you but you are just told that you open your mouth to the fullest okay and you laugh at the loudest pitch okay if you uh, want to give it a try okay uh, i can uh, manage a session where no you can have sensors attached to your body to look at you won't be able to others would be able to look at what changes your body underwent when you underwent a forced laughter type of a mechanism no there is nothing that uh, you know invokes involuntary laughter in you, but it is a deliberate attempt you know it is deliberate, but then you realize that it does influence your body. Okay. So, certain physiological mechanism that does get you know influenced by this type of an act. Okay. Uh, I am just uh, diverting a bit, uh, Davidson and uh, his colleagues they have conducted beautiful research okay, uh, that has to do with uh, the brain areas that are involved uh, in the state of meditation. I am deliberately quoting uh, you know, the research done by this team, because uh, they had taken the Buddhist monks okay, from uh, Dharamshala in Himachal Pradesh. So, they are basically the Tibetan monks. Uh, who are stationed uh, in Dharamshala in uh, Himachal Pradesh. And uh, this is uh, no, uh, my interpretation, it might have its limitation, uh, but uh, out of the different type of religious practices that you see in and around yourself, uh, my uh, interpretation is that the Tibetan monks are far more open compared to other religious groups in terms of scientific investigation. So, if you approach them that I, uh, I want to scientifically investigate whatever you are practicing, this is the group which is very, very open to it. Okay. They will never tell you that no, 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 these are all part of our uh, religious beliefs and practices and cannot be subjected to scientific investigation, like many other religious groups which will, does, which will not at all allow you. Okay, it will say that no, keep your science with you and I will keep my practice with myself. Okay, never ever think of uh, scientific investigation of our religious practices. Uh, one of my PhD student couple of years back, he had uh, done his PhD on uh, the Tibetan monks no? and uh, series of studies we had conducted at that time uh, to realize that uh, no, it is such an interesting community. Uh, which will very generously accept that okay, whatever you know, tools and techniques you want to use, use it. Okay, 
uh, and uh, whatever you want to you know uh, investigate whether this is good or bad or doable undoable it really affects does not affect everything they are very open to. So, I really appreciate you know uh, practicing communities like the Tibetan monks okay, which are very who are very generous no? who would very easily accept that okay, you want to scientifically prove something study something go ahead. So, Davidson was also fortunate because the Tibetan monks here in Dharamshala they agreed you know for a neuropsychological investigation of their practice. The whole study was that uh, uh, these Buddhist monks uh, had their PT scans the positron, uh, positron imaging tomography was used to identify the brain regions okay, uh, which were uh, you know, involved which were activated during the state of meditation. Okay. The most uh, interesting part of this research was <coughs> that you have certain areas of the brain which are uh, activated in the state of uh, meditation, but after meditation also okay, certain regions of the brain were still activated you know, the prefrontal area of the brain this very area was still activated. Okay. The person is not meditating this means that meditation for a specific duration perhaps has a much uh, you know, a long term impact. I have never come across a study where a scientific investigation of this type of a laughter session has been made. I have never studied, uh, otherwise I would have quoted you know, what scientific investigation proves. But I am sure that uh, such type of uh, you no know, practices also influences people you know, and they do not have you no know, uh, instant effect rather they have a long term effect. Like uh, the Davidson studies uh, findings primarily showed. Uh, an interesting thing also that the prefrontal uh, area of the brain was activated for longer duration. That would mean uh, that your brain remains at a very calm composed state okay, even though there could be environmental disturbances. Now, imagine a situation when you attain a state when the disturbances in and around you does not perturb you you as an individual process it, okay. but there is no complete state of uh, no emotional equilibrium that we are talking about. No? Your physiological mechanism will not undergo any disturbance. Uh, compare such cases uh, with some type of sales personnel. I am not saying that sales personnel are vulnerable to it, but selected sales, uh, sales uh, personnel you would realize that you know uh, aggressive hunting for uh, sale of the product hunting for the consumers okay uh, all types of uh, benchmarks you no know, this target has to be achieved in this quarter that target has to be achieved in that quarter and you realize that within few years okay you start paying price for it you know you have uh, you know problem with uh, you know all problem of ulcer problem of gastric many 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 types of problems started starts cropping in okay these are actually the indicators okay that we do have a, a system at place <coughs> and the beauty is uh, in maintaining the equilibrium within that system okay what method you adopt is your choice okay uh, psychological uh, practices will never endorse know that I am not endorsing that you go for meditation or you go for laughter. I am not advocating any of these. All I am saying is that there are multiple options. Okay. You can choose any one of them that suits you, that you uh, consciously decide to uh, practice, okay. but those practices will certainly help you in terms of uh, maintaining the equilibrium. Okay. And the more and more you become capable of maintaining that equilibrium the more and more uh, know, happy and healthy you are. Healthy once again from the WHO's definitions point of view, you are physically healthy, you are psychologically healthy, uh, psychologically healthy and you are also able to maintain that social well being. It has been observed that emotions do affect our biochemistry okay. and <coughs> 
intense or sustained changes in the biochemistry can induce symptoms of illnesses. No? Further emotions can be supplemented with inappropriate coping or faulty operations okay. and this could indirectly propel the individual towards maladaptation and distressing experiences which can affect the biochemistry and finally, it leads to illness. So, basically saying that emotions will you know, directly start you know, influencing the biochemistry okay. and once you have uh, you know, the inappropriate uh, coping or the operational mechanism uh, coming into picture, it will either intense the intensify the release of those uh, chemicals in the body or it will sustain it for a longer time. So, momentary, but intense release of certain chemicals or release of chemicals and releasing it continuously for much longer time. Okay. Then if this mixes up you know with the faulty operational mechanism and uh, inappropriate coping style, okay, this is bound to uh, know, shift you towards one or the other type of physical illness. Uh, when we come to a stress again we would refer to it, but because it has come to the biochemical regulation therefore, I thought I must share this with you. We have a couple of know chemicals that are available in our brain okay, namely serotonin, dopamine, cortisol. And the whole of uh, stressful experiences in life has to do with uh, the secretion of these chemicals, no? how the body, the brain is able to strike a balance between these chemicals. We also know that it is the amygdala, the hippocampus, the limbic system, the system in our brain which has to do with regulation of emotion. Now, if you are under tremendous stress, okay, there is an extra amount of release of cortisol in the brain. Okay. What we are referring to here as sustained change. If you have you know, a continuous release of cortisol in the brain, this means that there is an extra amount of cortisol that is available in the brain it starts uh, you know, uh, making the nerve cells die. So, it will kill the nerve cells and it has been realized that people uh, know especially with respect to uh, this killing of the nerve cells okay, that gradually you realize that certain areas of the, the size of certain areas of the brain shrinks, it will become smaller. Another example you can take of the post traumatic stress disorder. Okay. Uh, the neurophysiological studies indoors that uh, uh, people who have had uh, the PTSD symptoms, they show shrinking of amygdala and hippocampus in their brain. Okay. Now, you have amygdala and hippocampus which plays a role in important role in the regulation of emotion stressful state that shrinks the size of these two uh, anatomical structure. Okay. This would mean that once you are caught in this trap, okay, you should certainly try your best to come out of it. The reason being that uh, much longer you live in that state, okay, more uh, and more you are making it durable in nature. Because longer stay in that mental framework would entail shrinking of important uh, neuroanatomical structures. Shrinking of these neuroanatomical structures would mean that you will have a difficulty in terms of emotion regulation. Now, in future once you have diff difficulty in uh, emotion regulation, once again it will uh, know backfire. No? So, you start walking in loop. Okay. So, that is a trap where one, uh, one should certainly be aware of. And therefore, uh, remember one thing okay, we had referred to it long back when we were uh, know, talking about the maintenance needs, different types of defenses. Okay. You remember there we had talked about um, the uh, uh, physiological defense, we had talked about psychological defense, we had also talked about socio-cultural defenses. Okay. 
So, there are uh, no possibilities of these socio cultural differences where you can exploit the group resources that are available to you okay, and that can help you in terms of revisiting the faulty appraisal process. Okay. So, say for example, if I have a faulty appraisal of uh, mechanism okay, which in turn you know uh, makes me come forward with one of the goal incongruent emotion. No? Say for example, I uh, continuously uh, know revisit it and my appraisal leads to great sense of disgust. Okay. Disgust for certain period is fine. No? Say my lecture could be disgusting for you, you gave option for uh, attending the 6th March lecture and you were not selected, this could be disgusting for you, but these are all momentary disgusts. Okay, where the duration of that uh, goal incongruent emission is not very long. Problem comes when you have a long term uh, no, uh, emotional state that starts influencing you much heavily compared to okay, these short term emotions. Short term emotions are fine, you experience it and then it is flushed out, then you have another set of emotion. Okay. So, you are momentarily happy, you are momentarily sad, you are momentarily disgusted, it is fine, but do not sustain it for a longer time. We come to uh, the last thing, because we have been uh, over focusing on uh, the physical health. So, this last slide uh, where we would be basically referring to one of the neurotic uh, problems, neurotic disorders, okay. basically trying to relate emotional state with psychological disorder. Okay. Now, emotions and the whole appraisal mechanism, it is also bound to affect our uh, uh, psychological uh, system and therefore, it can make you vulnerable to a psychiatric disorder also. Uh, we take one example okay, of hypochondriasis. Hypochondriasis is a neurotic disorder, okay, where the person who experiences it, uh, he or she remains preoccupied with the bodily processes. Okay. So, you are too occupied with what is happening to my body and the final derivation is that you always assume that you have a disease. Okay. So, that is the reason why it is classified as a neurotic disorder. No? You are extra occupied with uh, know, your bodily mechanism and the end of it, the final interpretation of this bodily mechanism is that you have a, that I have a uh, disorder, a physical illness. For example, the examples could be say, you continuously touch your uh, know, wrist, oh, my pulse rate is sinking, one interpretation it has overshooted. Okay. I think uh, you know, uh, the pumping of the blood from my artery has increased, further increased, further increased, further increased. Okay. This is the you know, preoccupied with your bodily mechanism, pain in the knee, ah, it has intensified. I think such type of indicators are the premature indicators of arthritis. Increase in the pulse rate, this is an indicator of and the finally, what you conclude is not a small type of physical diseases. No? It is now you blow things out of proportion okay? and then you give it a very big name no? and you are then satisfied that is hypochondriasis. No? Now, we all do not get over involved uh, with you know, our body in order to search for possible diseases. You know. Say for example, you are sitting in a particular posture okay, and suddenly if you move and say if there was a minor pain here, uh, it happens. You no, know, We do not pay attention to it, we are not over engulfed in uh, you know, those type of physical reactions by our body. Okay. We say ah, it is okay. Those of you who are uh, into games and sports, you know, Many a times you experience the ache in your body at one point or the other point in your body, but then you say it is okay. okay and you continue playing. We are never paid that much of attention to our uh, 
bodily system okay and especially when you deliberately search into your own bodily changes so as to extract a disease for yourself you remember the famous old movie of rajesh khanna where he says no lymphosarcoma of the intestine if i say this you will be pleased because the name indoor says that it's really a great disease no hypochondriasis is something like that no you think of a very big disease and you say i have now found out all type of changes that my body has undergone i think it is this again you take pride in this that that's the reason why it is called uh, no psychiatric disorder and therefore hypochondriasis in a manner is an outcome of the appraisal of the bodily functions okay and changes and the emotional reactions that we show to those bodily changes no so first you search for a change in the physical system pulse rate has increased then you go for an appraisal of this okay and then this leads to an emotional state that emotional state in turns make you, you know construe a big disease okay and that disease uh, you know once again you know leads you to experience another emotion and finally you know you need a care of a specialist who can make you realize that come on you do not have a disease in the body rather you have a disorder in the brain because you are always searching for a disease okay uh, when we come to our last unit where we would be talking about psychological disorder okay primarily at that time you would be uh, focusing only at two sets of disorder no personality disorders and adjustment disorder but before that we would you know just you know very briefly you know look at the whole set of neurotic and psychotic disorders and there in that list in of neurotic disorders you will find uh, you know disorders like hypochondriasis neurasthenia okay these disorders will also figure out in that list okay so uh, that was all about uh, emotion and adjustment uh, what we have done in this uh, in this module was that we initially establish the relationship between emotion and the adjustment process okay we looked at the appraisal mechanism okay and uh, we devoted one day to the appraisal of the goal congruent emotions which are positive in nature the third day when we talked about the goal incongruent emotions the negative emotions the outcome of which are and then finally today we have associated uh, emotion and health so one can very easily understand that one can plot a graph where you have uh, adjustment emotion okay and well being all psychological physical and social well being all will you know fall on the same plane same trajectory okay so that's all uh, that is all about emotion and adjustment uh, tomorrow we will be starting a new module where we would talk about couple of uh, topics the first topic tomorrow would be stress Thank you.